Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Inside Guns with your host, me, the Yankee Marshall. Today, I want to talk about something that's got a lot of people upset. I've seen a lot of people freaking out about it, getting emails about it from uh, gun organizations. I'm seeing it on the web pages of places like Guns America, seeing lots of YouTube videos on it. And what I'm talking about is the new bill uh, where they're trying to establish a national registry for anyone to buy guns or ammo or to own guns or ammo. And it's what it sounds like, a national registry, which of course would be unconstitutional. But a lot of people are freaking out about it because it's been introduced. And that means, you know, probably going to go somewhere, right? Uh, why would everybody be getting so upset about it if it wasn't going to go anywhere? Well, this bill, and it's H.R. 127, I do believe, if you pay attention to it, it is a bill that has been submitted multiple times. Every year by Sheila Jackson Lee. She is a Democrat from Texas and I do believe she might be the dumbest person in Congress. She might even be dumber than Maxine Waters, uh, Gomert, or uh, that one guy who thought that the island of Guam would tip over if we built a military base on one side of it. She just might be dumber than all of them. Uh, so she's usually not something to worry too much about. And in this case, I'm going to have to say that is the case because this bill, like I said, this, uh, HR 127, the last time she introduced it, it was house bill 4081 and a different number before that and a different number before that. And every time she submits it, just like right now, there is no co-sponsors. It never gets a single co-sponsor ever. It always gets sent to committee immediately declared dead on arrival and goes nowhere. It just expires because they always refer it to the Department of Homeland Security for scrutiny. And they're always like, this is blatantly unconstitutional. There are laws against making registries. You can't make law. You can't make a bill saying, hey, let's make a registry because there are laws that already say that that's something the government can't do. You can't just blatantly break the law, but she's not smart enough to realize that. Uh, so she introduces this session after session after session. And like I say, zero co-sponsors, never goes anywhere. First time it goes to committee, they kick it off to uh, a validating organization to say whether this is uh, something that can even be done or not. And they always say uh, no. So it just languishes there and dies every term. There's lots of these bills. Now, this doesn't mean we shouldn't pay attention because you should pay attention that someone like Sheila Jackson Lee is actually in the Congress. But lately, the Congress is like the most uh, just sad group of nut jobs I've ever seen. Republicans and Democrats. You got QAnon people. You got people like Sheila Jackson Lee. And like I said before, people who think islands will tip over if you put too much weight on one side. Uh, Louis Gohmert. Dumb as a fucking rock. I mean, it's just, it's not uh, a, an issue of left or right or Democrat or Republican. It's like every fucking district in most of the goddamn states in this country have decided that hey, we don't want these fucking village idiots here fucking up our shit, so let's send them to Congress. And uh, Sheila Jackson Lee is definitely an example of that. It's I think her district was like, how do we get her the fuck out of here? Oh, I know, we can send her to Washington. Uh, and that appears to be the case with a lot of people right now. But as far as this bill is concerned, this uh, House Resolution 127 to create a completely unconstitutional gun registry uh, is, is not going anywhere. Don't panic over it. Don't feel like you need to start writing checks to organizations or uh, write or, or, or freaking out because some sweaty, you know, red faced guy on YouTube told you about what a, what a tragedy this is and how dare they and oh my God, we're so mad. We have to fight this because we aren't really going to have to fight it because it ain't going anywhere. That doesn't mean, we, like I said, we don't pay attention to it. We'll watch it. We always do. Uh, like the laws here in Washington. We're always watching, watching them. Just because we're not freaking out about them on the air uh, or telling people, oh my God, you got to send us money because this is going on. Because we're not doing that, that doesn't mean we're not watching. And it doesn't mean we're not working to try to stop these things. The ones we think will actually go through. If you just spent all your time worrying about the ones that aren't going to go through, you'll never get everything done and you'll miss some ones that do go through. 
So Sheila Jackson Lee is nothing to worry about. And this House Resolution 127 or House Resolution or House Bill 4081 or whatever you want to call it, whichever one number it has now, hasn't gone anywhere in the past, isn't going to go anywhere now. It's been up now for almost a month. She doesn't have a single co-sponsor as usual because every other person in the Senate and or Congress at least uh, I'd like to say they're all smart and smart enough to know it's a go nowhere bill, but I think most of them, it's just not their go nowhere bill, so they don't care about it. But I just want to let everyone know, don't freak out about it. This is the soup of the day from the fear mongers. It's the, you know, the uh, rallying cry right now of all the extremists and everything that want to rile you up and get you to do something stupid and make you buy products and give them money. But uh, it's nothing to worry about. Where people are watching it, trust me. If it gets to any stage where it looked like it could even possibly pass, we'll let you know. But this whole screaming that the sky is falling every time someone who's borderline retarded introduces something that will go nowhere because it is ridiculously stupid. If we do that every time, when do people stop paying attention? People can only handle so much. We can only take so many people crying wolf and screaming the sky is falling before you finally start just tuning it out because it just gets to be white noise. This is another example of that. It's another example of the fear mongers, the profiteers, etc. over exaggerating something to make you scared, make you angry so that then you can be easily manipulated. And also the bad thing about that O is not only are you easily manipulated into buying products and giving money, you're also easily manipulated by the other side into doing something stupid that makes us all look bad and sets the gun, fight, uh, the gun rights movement back a little bit. So don't let yourself get angry. Don't let yourself get scared. Ignore those red-faced, sweaty, uh, uh, talking heads on YouTube uh, or anywhere else you see them. Because right now, like I said, pay attention to what's going on. Look at it. Research it. See, it's never gone anywhere before. It's following the same path now. So maybe you should put your energy elsewhere. Because like I said, right now, this is just nothing that deserves a whole lot of fuss over it. Because once again, it ain't going no place. And we'll watch it and we'll let you know if it is going to go someplace. But like I said, it ain't going to. All right, now to get the taste of Sheila Jackson Lee out of my mouth, I want to move on to my favorite part of the show, Gun Talk. And today I want to talk about co-witnessing a red dot on a pistol. I have spoken about this many times in the past and it seems a lot of people are still confused about what a true co-witness is and why we should do it. People are like, well, why do you need a co-witness if you've got a red dot? Or, well, can't I just co-witness with the front sight? Why do you say I need a rear sight? Well, there's reasons for all this. Uh, I like to have a total backup on my red dot site because I like technology. I like things like red dots, but just because I like technology and I'm a hip old geezer doesn't mean I trust it and definitely doesn't mean I understand it, but I definitely don't trust it either. So I want to still have a fully functional set of sights if something happens to that red dot. When you co-witness, you're co-witnessing two separate functioning sets of sights to hit the same spot. And if one fails, you can use the other. Usually, in this case, the one that would fail would be the red dot. So that's why I say I need to have a full co-witness and I need to have a rear sight. But some people, like I said, don't seem to understand that. They're like, well, can't I just co-witness with the front sight? Well, you can, but that's not a true co-witness. It is a co-witness of sort, but if the red dot fails, the front sight is useless because it's working in conjunction with the red dot, not independently of the red dot, like it would if you had a rear sight. And I decided the best way to illustrate this is to come up with some little drawings here and show everybody what I mean. So if you're looking through the back window of your RMR, your red dot, whatever it is, and you can see your front sight up there, you can co-witness this. You can co-witness the red dot with your front sight. And after you do this, if you hold your gun perfectly in alignment, and to where the red dot and the front sight line up, you'll hit right where the red dot and the front iron sights tell you you're going to hit every time. And then if you move the sights off target to where you don't have your gun properly aligned, well, the red dot, that's where it comes into play, it'll actually stay with the target. It won't stay with your front sight. And you'll still hit where that red dot is. That's what the red dots are great for. They are easy to follow. You don't have to line them up with anything. The dot is all you have to look at. It follows the target. And in this case, it'll follow the target. You'll hit where you're shooting at. 
But let's say you've got that red dot co-witnessed with just a front sight. You go off target with that front sight and then tragedy strikes. The red dot battery dies. Well, now you're screwed. You don't know where you're going to hit. You can try to bring your front sight back into proper alignment in the window, but you don't have a reference point. So if you're off a little bit, well, you're not going to be hitting where you aim. And that's not a good thing. So just co-witnessing with the front sight is not a true co-witness because if one sight goes dead, the other one is now non-functional. Whereas if you have a rear sight and a front sight and then you co-witness your red dot with it, it'll function just like it did when you co-witnessed with the front sight. It'll hit right on. Wherever you're pointing those things at, that's where you'll hit. And then once again, if you move your gun out of alignment, in this case, move your sights out of alignment, the red dot will still follow the target and you'll still know where you're hitting. But here's where it gets different. If you take your sights off target and then the red dot dies once again, now you're not left guessing. You can simply bring the front sight back into alignment with the rear sight you have a fully functioning set of backup sights. You don't need the red dot for the front sight to work because you have a rear sight. That's when you have a true co-witness. When you have a set of iron sights that can function on their own and a red dot sight that can function on its own, you can use them in unison and co-witness them together. But if that one sight goes dead, you have to be able to have a witness with the backup sights. You have to be able to have a proper alignment without any help from the sight that went dead. That's a proper co-witness and that's why I think it's important so that you know where you're hitting if your red dot goes dead. So if you look at it like that, it's pretty simple. It's just basically having two sets of sights. The technological sights, the red dot, that follow the target wherever you want to go, and that front and rear sight in case that technology fails you and you can shoot the old fashioned way simply by lining up your backup sights. All right, everyone, I want to end the show today as usual with our viewer EDC. And today is a very special viewer EDC. We have a very special guest here as our concealed carrier of the day, and it is, and he needs no introduction, but I'm going to give him one anyway. It is Uncle Chingus. As you can see, Uncle Chingus is living the Chingus life here, enjoying himself, and he is carrying in the appendix position an inside waistband what appears to be an H&K P2000 or a USP. Uh, it looks like a USP or a P2000. Like I said, it's not a P30 or anything based on the sights I'm seeing right there, but the grip texture's throwing me, so I'm wondering, does he have a wrap on there maybe, or maybe it's had a melt job done to the grip, or maybe it's just melted because it's so close to uh, Uncle Chingus this is crotch. Maybe that's why it's melted. You know, it's got to be hot down there. But even though I can't really tell exactly what he's carrying, we can see that he's carrying and we can see how he's carrying it. Now, usually I'd give someone a little bit of uh, heat for carrying appendix, but this is Uncle Chingus. I think we all know that Uncle Chingus's genitalia isn't afraid of no gun, so I'm not going to make a big deal out of it. So anyway, Uncle Chingus chooses to carry is okay with me because, you know, the Chingus way is the way. So wanted to show him here today. Uh, Uncle Chingus, like I said, our special guest viewer EDC of the day, carrying his H&K of some sort, it appears to me, in his inside waistband Kydex holster with an extra mag. All right, everybody, that's our show for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you come back next week. We'll be back on Monday. So until then, I just want to sign off and tell everyone, as far as the state of the world today is concerned, you know, it is what it is. But what things will be in the future, if we keep our heads about us, we don't let ourselves be manipulated by fear and anger and the people who profit off of it, and we stand together and we fight in a smart and hard way, we will win, and what things will be in the future is better. <laughs>